Psalm 121. And as you are finding that in your Bibles, uh, again, I just want to share a bit about uh, next week, next Sunday. Uh, after our prayer gathering at 8 o'clock, we then have um, Sons of Korah. Now the sons, oh, there's Warren and Lorraine. See you later. God bless you as you say goodbye to your daughter and, and all of that. Good on you. Bless you. Um, anyway, um, uh, yeah, Sons of Korah next week. So Sons of Korah sing, obviously, songs just about the Psalms. We've just been going through a series on the book of Psalms, and this is just so wonderful that we've got this beautiful band who are world-renowned for singing the songs of Psalms. Plus also uh, the main leader, he's got his PhD in the book of Psalms, and he's going to do some quality teaching on uh, the book of Psalms. So come along next uh, Sunday. It's going, to be, uh, it's going to be terrific. Invite anybody else to, to come along as well. Psalm 121, verse 1, a song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Yeah, so we have been going through this series of of, uh, the book of Psalms. And and we started uh, about seven weeks ago and, uh, and, and we were looking at what are the Psalms, and, uh, and we looked at the most popular uh, Psalm, Psalm 23. We then looked at Psalm 34, verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Five weeks ago, we started Psalm 42, as the deer pants for streams of water. So my soul pants for you, O God. We looked at Psalm 46, verse 10, where it says, Be still and know that I am God. And Psalm 51, creating me a pure heart, O God. Two weeks ago, Robbie preached from Psalm 118, his love endures forever. And last week we looked at the longest chapter in the entire Bible, Psalm 119, in which 170 verses out of the 176 verses speak about the Word of God. And today we are looking at this psalm, Psalm 121. Notice here that the psalm commences with the title, A Song of Ascents. Actually, this title appears in 15 psalms from Psalm 120 through to 134. The word ascents means to step or going up. And one of the reasons why it's called Uh, the psalm of ascent, is because they were sung by Jews who were travelling from various parts around that area to go to Jerusalem for three annual feasts. They were the main feast in Jerusalem that were held each year. They were the Feast of, of Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles and the Feast of Pentecost. But the big one of these three was the Passover feast. The whole family would come from various parts around the regions and will come to Jerusalem. Uh, Only the men were required to go to the other two feasts. Jesus would have sung these songs with the family, with his family, as they made their way up to Jerusalem each year for the Passover. In fact, we read in Luke. 2, verse 41 and 42. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. Notice here that they went up to Jerusalem. You see, Jerusalem is located about 2,800 feet above sea level. And so no matter which direction that you were coming from to the city, you were always going up to Jerusalem. For example, walking the 27 kilometres from the city of Jericho to the city of Jerusalem, the the road rises uh, rises about um, about a kilometre, about a kilometre. So here 
these psalms, the Psalms of Ascent, was first of all because they were sung by pilgrims, literally going up to Jerusalem. But they're also called the Psalms of Ascent because the Psalms themselves have a kind of upward motion. They begin with the believer crying out to God in trouble who are far away from Jerusalem. And they end with the believers offering up praises to God in his temple courts. And so these group of psalms are are travel songs full of of, of beauty, imagery and, and, and meaningful expression and divine wisdom for the journey that they were taking. Have you ever gone on a road trip and you put together on your iPhone or whatever a a, a playlist for for your journey? Well, this is what these Psalms of Ascent are. They are short, easy to memorise and meant to be sung in praise and worship to God. God's people have always been a a singing and worshipping Community And God gave us these psalms to help us give expressions to the feeling of the heart as we worship him in prayer and in song. Well, in the Bible, Jerusalem represents the city of God, the place of the temple, the place where God came and dwelled and to meet with his people. And that's why so many people each year would make this annual pilgrimage to the city. And so as we read the Psalms of Ascent today, they hold great meaning for us too because all of us are on a journey, on a spiritual journey. Some of you here just may not quite realise that even though you have not asked Christ to be your Lord and Saviour of your life, that God is actually working in your life. You are right at the very beginning of your journey, perhaps at a crossroads. Some of you are over there, some of you are over here, some of you are way over there in your spiritual journey. It doesn't matter what stage of your spiritual journey, of your faith that you are on, we know that life sometimes throws those curve balls. The road becomes rockier, becomes narrower and therefore harder. And for several of the Jews making the journey up to Jerusalem, It wasn't always safe. And so they would sing this psalm. Look at verse 1. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? Remember, they were travelling. And they were looking at the mountain where Jerusalem was at the top. It was from the foot of the mountains that they would look up. And they would ask, they would sing, where does my help come from? You know, a few times in the Bible, we are encouraged to to look up, to look up and see the, the majestic God. Isaiah said in chapter 40, verse 26, he says, Look up into the heavens. Who created the stars? He brings them all out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and comparable strength, not a single one is missing. It may have been that when the Jewish pilgrims were at the foot of the mountain that they looked up and asked, where does the help come from? Climbing any mountain over a a thousand metres wouldn't be difficult. Has anyone here climbed the beauty of uh, Mount Warning at all? Anybody climbed that at all? Oh, good on you. I'm feeling pretty bad. I haven't yet. I've been told it's, uh, it's a little bit of a trek up there. Well, for the pilgrims, they knew that climbing up that mountain contained some wild animals that lived there. But they also knew that uh, there were thieves there who could rob them. And they knew too that the track leading up to that city wasn't always smooth as what we might have today. But as the pilgrims reached the foot of the mountain, they knew where their help was going to come from. And so verse 2 declares, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. They knew that their help would come from the majestic God. It's helpful to note of the name of God here, for God that is used not only in this psalm, but in 15 of the other 
Psalms of Ascent. He is the Lord. And when you see Lord spout in capital letters like that, it comes from the Hebrew word Yahweh, which is God's covenant name. It is a name that speaks of God's covenant relationship with his people and his faithfulness to them. The name Yahweh in the Old Testament points to God's covenant relationship with Israel. As followers of Jesus, we are also in a relationship with the Lord. You are part of God's covenant people and you can trust God's faithfulness in Christ. And when you read the Old Testament and see how God helped Israel and cared for them, you can rest assured that He will do the same for each of us. Where does your help come from? It comes from Lord God who is faithful to His promises. After personally celebrating the Lord's help in verses 1 and 2, the psalmist then turns to give assurance to others in verses 3 to 8. First, look at the first half of verse 3. It says, He will not let your foot slip. He would not let your foot slip. Now, I read an interesting article on this phrase and its meaning. Jason DeRocci is an associate professor of Old Testament at Bethlehem College and Seminary. He points out that the word combination depicting foot slip in verse 3 is never used in other scripture passages in terms of falling down, slipping over and so on, as we tend to read it like that here. Rather, all four of his occurrences uses it frequently for someone who is overcome by divine judgment or personal sin or weakness or enemy oppression. So when the psalmist wrote here, he will not let your foot slip, he was most likely speaking about the perseverance of the saints. The perseverance of the saints is a Christian teaching that says that once a person is truly born again of God and regenerated by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, nothing in heaven or on earth shall be able to separate them from the love of God. They are eternally secured or or, or simply put, once saved, always saved. This is a teaching that our churches, that our church upholds in our statement of beliefs. The Psalms here is not promising the absence of pain or even failure. But he is promising that whatever that mountain may bring, the saved will not slip away from their salvation. No one can snatch God's sheep out of his hand, according to John 10. And the one who has been justified will never again be condemned, according to Romans 8. What mercy here. What a promise. The sure confidence that we have today that we will remain with God tomorrow is absolutely amazing. We've got to thank Him. We've got to remain dependent upon Him. The psalmist says that the Lord our helper never sleeps on His job. Look at verses 3 to 4. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. We can sleep peacefully because our Lord does not sleep. Isaiah wrote this about God in chapter 40, verse 28. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. Yahweh is always awake, always aware always watching over his children. And that is the key word in this psalm, watches. It comes from the Hebrew word shama, which means to watch over, to guard or to protect. The word shows up six times in verses 3 to 8. In the NIV translation, as it's translated as watches over five times and then also translated as keep in verse 7. If you are in Christ, then he who oversees Israel also watches over your life as well. The God of Israel is also our protector. He is our guardian. And so the psalmist continues in this poetic language about 
the Lord God who, who guards us. It says in verses five to eight, the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Last Thursday, many of us were saddened to hear of the death of soul and gospel singer Aretha Franklin who died of pancreatic cancer at the age of 76. I particularly remember Aretha singing in the Blues Brothers movie. That's when I first heard about, about her. Aretha was a committed Christian. She was a lifelong Baptist with whom she gave God the credit for her most amazing voice. She started out in the 1950s as part of her father's gospel show. And she made her first recording at the age of 14 at his new Bethel Baptist Church in Detroit. She was known for her various secular songs, but Aretha also recorded the best-selling gospel album, Amazing Grace, back in 1972, which is among the five Aretha recordings features in the Grammy Hall of Fame. The two record set includes classic songs like Amazing Grace, To What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and God Will Take Care of You. In 1987, the year that she became the first woman to be inducted into the Rock and Rolls Hall of Fame, she recorded One Lord, One Faith, One Baptism, an album of sacred songs that won a Grammy for the best soul performance. Aretha had battled cancer since 2010, but rarely talked about it. In 2013, after counselling a series of concerts due to a undisclosed condition, she told the Associated Press that her healing was considered as absolutely miraculous. She said, I was talking to Smokey Robinson, my oldest best friend, and talking about the fact that some doctors are not very well acquainted with faith healing, she said. And Smokey said, well, they just don't know who your healer is. In 2017, she was asked by the Chicago Sun Times about the importance of her faith. And Aretha said, it is very important. It certainly has sustained me to this day. Well, the Lord did watch over Aretha throughout her life. And as the Psalms wrote, the Lord continued to watch over her coming and going, both now and forevermore. And that is the hope that we have in Christ Jesus, our help comes from the Lord who watches our coming and going both now and forevermore into eternity. Whatever part of the road that you are on in your faith journey, we are to look beyond the mountains to the God who created them. Melbourne. Mountains are symbols of strength and, and stability. They are obviously great in size, long-lasting, unchanging. They reflect the Creator. And so the God who made the mountains is even greater in power and in strength. The mountains are also an upward direction. We tend to look down when we are facing issues and challenges. Our faces become downcast. Our focus is on our troubles and all of our problems down there. And they tend to drag us further down. But we aren't to just look down. That's the wrong direction. The mountains are a reminder that we are to look up. We are to lift our eyes to the mountains, but not to stop there. Are you looking high enough? We must look beyond the mountains to the God who created them because God is higher than all. Remember these psalms were sung by travellers 
who were on their way to Jerusalem. And it's possible that they may have sung this psalm as they were nearing these mountains that were surrounding Jerusalem. In that case, they were not only to be looking up to the mountain, but they were to also be looking up to Jerusalem, the temple, the dwelling place of God. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. And we also read in Psalm 90 verse 2, Before the mountains were born and you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. God is bigger than the mountains and therefore God is before the mountains. We don't look to the mountains for our strength, but we look to the mountains to get our eyes off our problems and lift it up towards Jesus. In the very early days of the early church, there was a man named Stephen. Luke described him as a man who was full of God's grace and power. And he did. He performed a number of miracles in the name of Jesus. And he spoke about Jesus. And yet we know that this really infuriated the religious leaders at the time. And so they began to stir up trouble about Stephen, eventually seizing him and bringing him before the Jewish courts. Lies were told against Stephen. But then Stephen was allowed to respond. And he started with Abraham, then spoke about Joseph, and then he told the whole story about Moses. Stephen then shared something about David and then then Solomon. Then Stephen came to the punchline and boldly told all those who were present, those who he knew had the power of putting him to death. And he said, was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. They obviously became so angry at him that they tore their clothes, their outer garments. And then Luke wrote simply but profoundly, recorded what happened next. Acts 7 verse 55. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Did you hear what Stephen did? Facing death, he looked Stephen looked up and he saw not only the glory of God, but he also saw Jesus. What a sight that must have been. And likewise, we are to look up. Look up by praying, look up by crying, look up by singing, look up by by reading his word. Don't just look at the mountains, but look to the one who made the mountains. Look past the, past the creation to the creator. Our help comes from him. He is constantly watching over us.